Okay, and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about the hinge theorem, and then we're also going to talk about the converse of the hinge theorem. Now, of course, just by their names, you can tell that they're going to be very, very similar, so i kind of doing this all in one video. All right, so to start off with the first one, now, whenever you read these theorems in mathematics, make sure... You, uh, we're, I'm going to read this all through once, um, but when you read these theorems, a lot of times you cannot figure out what is going on uh, when you read all the way through them. So I'm going to read through it once, and then we're going to go back and kind of explain it piece by piece. All right, here we go. If two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle, and the included angles are not congruent, then the longer third side is across from the larger included angle. Okay, now obviously, again, when you read all the way through that, it's a little bit confusing, but let's get through this piece by piece, make it a little bit easier to understand. All right, so if two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle. All right, so you notice my picture's down here. So two, two sides of one triangle congruent, two sides of another triangle. So right here, one tick mark, one tick mark, there's one pair of congruent sides. Two tick marks here, and then down here, two tick marks here. There's my second pair of congruent sides. Okay, so that's what that first part, that first part of that sentence is talking about. Okay, and the included angles are not congruent. Okay, now included angle simply just means the angle that is included in between the two sides that we're talking about. Okay, so we're talking about these two sides here. So the included angle is going to be this 50 degrees here. Same thing over here on this triangle two sides we're talking about, these tick marks right here, the included angle is going to be this angle right here, this 28 degrees. All right. And they are not congruent, so they're not the same. Obviously, you can see that this one's 50 degrees, this one's 28 degrees, they're going to be a little bit different. All right. Now, last part, then the longer third side is across from the larger included angle. All right, so basically what it means, the longer third side is going to be across from the larger included angle. So basically what that means, and it's, it's kind of, you might be able to already see this, here's 50 degrees, here's 28 degrees. 50 degrees is the larger angle. 50 degrees is the larger angle, which means, that's a horrible arrow there, okay, which means this 50 degrees means that this AC is going to be larger, 28 is smaller, 28 is smaller, so then that means that this is going to be a small side. So then what do we know? We know that this side, AC, is going to be greater than this side over here, XZ. Okay, so basically what this hinge theorem tells us is this is a way for us to compare sides of triangles uh, from two different triangles. So again, we were comparing this third side AC over here with this triangle's third side XZ over here. But again, we had to have some we had to have some criteria first. That's why we talked about at the very beginning. We talked about here's a congruent side, here's a congruent side. Uh, same with another pair down here. You got to have that first and the included angle. So there's a, there's a, a couple of things we have to have. Uh, before we can actually start comparing those two sides. Anyway, there's the hinge theorem. Okay, now on to its counterpart, the converse of the hinge theorem. Okay, now instead of reading this all the way through, like I did last time for the first one, I'm just going to go bit by bit, um, kind of explaining our way through this. This is very, very similar, so I'm going to go a little faster. Okay, if two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle, so again, we got our tick marks again. So here's one pair of congruent sides. Here's another pair of congruent sides. There we go. And the third sides are not congruent. So notice here we got this 13 and we got this 18. Those are obvious that the third sides of these triangles are not congruent. They're not the same. Okay. So now that we've met that criteria, then the larger included angle is across from the longer third side. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're looking for the larger angle. So this 18 over here is our larger side, which makes the opposite angle larger. This 13 is the smaller side. It's going to make this angle over here smaller. Okay. So then, and then what do we know down here? Now, this is going to be a little bit different from the first one. We're not looking at sides this time. Instead, we're, we're looking at comparing angles. So actually, well, we'll start with this angle over here. The measure of angle C is actually going to be smaller than the measure of angle Z. 
Okay, Z is actually the bigger angle, so I use my less than symbol there to compare those two angles. Okay, all right, so that's the hinge theorem and the converse of the hinge theorem. Just going over those rather quickly. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over a couple of examples that uses these theorems. Okay, now the first thing we got to do whenever you're comparing the measurement of angles, like we're doing for this first problem, or if you're comparing um, the length of sides, like we're doing with the second example, the first thing you got to do, you got to recognize your triangles. Where are they? Uh, you also got to recognize, make sure you have those two pairs of congruent sides. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do when I look at these, when I look at my picture, is I got to find my pairs of congruent sides, and then I can start comparing these angles we have up here. All right, so now when I look at the picture, I got two triangles. I got this one triangle on top, and I got this second triangle on the bottom. And I'm going to look for my, I'm going to look for my congruent sides. Now the first obvious one is right here, five and five. There's my first pair of congruent sides. My second pair, a little bit harder to see, is actually this pair right there. This pair right here in the middle is the bottom side for the top triangle. This side is also the top of the bottom triangle. Okay, there's that, 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 that right there is actually two sides. It's, it's, it's one for the top triangle and one for the bottom triangle. So we've got to kind of count it twice. So there's our second pair of congruent sides. All right, so now that we have that, now we can start comparing the angles. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to color code these a little bit. We'll make MLN. MLN right here is going to be our red angle. All right, and then PLN, the other one we're going to compare with, PLN, is going to be right here. Okay, so now that I have those marked up, now I can, instead of saying MLN and PLN, I'm just going to say the red angle and the blue angle. It makes it a little bit easier for us. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare them. So now, as I look at these, 6 is going to be the small side, making red my small angle. 7 is the big side. 7 is the big side. You say larger or big. Okay, and so that makes blue my bigger side. So what that means is that the measure of angle P, L, N is larger than the measure of angle uh, MLN. There we go. Okay, so what we were doing is we're using these these third sides over here, the six and the seven. We're using those to help us to to figure out which angle is going to be bigger, which angle is going to be smaller. Okay. All right, now down to the second example down here. Now what we're doing is we're comparing sides. So I'm going to do kind of the same thing I did last time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to color code this first. Okay, so XY is this side we're talking about right here. Trying to make a straight line there. Okay, ZY is this side over here. All right. Now, as you look at this problem, um, the, the first reaction you, you, you see is that, well, if I'm comparing the length of these two sides, I know which side is bigger. Okay, this side over here, x, y, is obviously a lot bigger. And yes, you are correct in that, but the thing is, is in mathematics, what we got to do is we have to prove everything. You have to have evidence of what you're thinking. You, you can't just say, oh, that side is bigger because it looks bigger. That doesn't really work anymore. What you have to do is you actually have to find evidence of what you're thinking of. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to identify our triangles, just, just like what we did last time with this example up here. Okay, so I have two triangles. I got my one on the left here, and I got the one on the right here. And I got to find the pairs of congruent sides. So here's a 12 and a 12. There's one pair. And then just like last time up here, the, this side is shared between both the triangles. So there's my second pair of congruent sides. This is, the, this is a side for the left triangle, and this is also a side for the right triangle. Now that I have those pairs of sides, now what I can do is I can start looking at the angles. Well, notice that we're actually, this 137, that helps to make this side over here really big. 137 is a pretty big angle. But the thing is, is we're missing, we're missing the angle right here to help us identify with this side. Okay, so now what we have to do is go back to some of our previous knowledge. This right here is a straight line. Straight lines are 180 degrees. So what I what I can do is just take 180 and subtract that from 137, or excuse me, other way around, um, 180 minus 137, and I think I get 43 degrees. 43, yep, that's what that is. So now that we have an angle measurement there, now we have for sure, we are 100% sure that this YZ is going to be the smaller side, and then this 137 makes XY the larger side. So now we know that XY is going to be larger than ZY.
Okay, so that gives us the ability to write that. Again, you got to have evidence of it. You can't just say willy nilly. I think this side's bigger than that side because I think so. You can't really say that. You got to have some evidence to that. Alrighty, um, that's it for. Um, the uh, hinge theorem and the converse of the hinge theorem. Uh, thank you for watching this video, and we'll see you next time.